um, I remember telling Okia then we built pick up Mutani to where it is by the mere fact we've um, tried to understand the customer. Mm. Then can we look at the customer as yeah. the financier? Because then when we go back to Shia to fight for them, yeah. why yeah. would Shia to fight exactly. for give us capital yeah, at yeah. that time? So then the customer is the one to actually fund us. Yes. So as if we focus now our efforts in building, building. For the customer, yeah. I believe we can be sustainable and yeah. actually profitable. And this was a loan, not exchange for equity. From uh, from, from Shia to five. Uh, it was yes. a loan. It was a loan. It was a loan. Okay. So you, you retained yeah. the shareholding. Yeah. Actually, maintain 50-50. Ah, yeah. oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> the problem, for example, uh, with the startup ecosystem and. S- we are from that ecosystem, but we see the problems with that is the customer's voice is never heard. No, yeah, it's, I think it's we so are, true. We are, we are importing a lot of concepts, yes. which, which is okay, which is really fine. But then again, to, gen, to localize those concepts, because if Amen. you look at, for mm-hmm. example, uh, the most successful company in history of Kenya, Safari. Safari, yeah. Uh, one... Uh, I personally did that study when we were in campus. We were told to do that study. And Safaricom, I think, it, uh, when Bob Collin was alive, mm. they decided they want to be uh, a Fortune 500 company. And they looked at ways that they, they were going to, to achieve that. So one, the internet was growing. Mm-hmm. So they, they, uh, they bought uh, an internet company. And then they looked at their employees. So... Yep. To build for the future, they could have people who are 50s, 60s working there. Mm. <laughs> so it had to be a million value of between 25 yeah. to 30, mm. not even above that. Mm. So that as the trends are going on, Safaricom knows those trends. Mm. Okay. Okay. I mean, I could offer them shares in yeah. the company. No, I. <laughs> Why not? The first employees in most. This is the same as Sisi Wakikuyu. Sisi Nikamu de Kinjo. I think I can pay on often we hear about um, startups in Kenya that are bootstrapped. Um, That's why I'm pretty stoked today. We have two amazing co-founders who are going to talk about their bootstrapped startup. I'll just head over to intros. Um, We'll start with a fellow here. Chris. Awesome. Kia, co-founder from Pickup Mutani. And uh, Maluga Robert, uh, co-founder and CEO of Pickup Mutani. Awesome. Welcome, Okia and Waluga. We are really happy to have you here. You. Without any much ado, let's let's get started. Um, for those who don't know what Pickup Mutani is, um, what is Pickup Mutani? Um, yeah. Um, so Pickup Mutani is a um, last mile delivery service. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, providing uh, delivery services to social sellers. Uh, reason why we talk about social sellers is because um, uh, we identified that as the primary customer to pick up Mutani. So we identified sellers are uh, selling on uh, Facebook, okay. WhatsApp, um, uh, Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, we always had this notion internally that um, uh, social media is where um, a lot of e-commerce activities were happening. And uh, you cannot... Um, uh, dispute that based on the daily active uh, users that are uh, rallying through in uh, Instagram and Facebook. Um, so ideally, we decided to focus on them and try to now build them a um, uh, delivery service that uh, connects them to their customers, uh, basically in the most affordable uh, manner. Um, so basically, that's <laughs> big and tiny. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah. Probably just add it's, it's a tech enabled. Tech enabled. Because uh, most of the delivery services that people are used to are generally uh, analog, as we've been reminded today <laughs> by one of our customers. So it's uh, tech has always been. Uh, in our DNA, even uh, to Kianza, yeah. but slowly we've uh, we, we normally say we are tech enthusiasts. You're tech enthusiasts, yeah. yeah. So probably uh, investing uh, even just thought wise into tech since then, I would say is what become tiny probably 
is from from the get go. And by the way, I like the name <coughs> become tan. It's like any Kenyan can resonate with that meaning. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> very, very clear. So kudos on such a great name. Okay. Um, I'll just ask my final question, then I'll hand over to you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I want to know a little bit about yourselves. Like, um, what gets you? What fires you up? How did you meet each other? Mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So we actually go way back. Mm. We've been uh, high school mates. Oh, nice. Uh, so yeah. since 2006. Uh, finished high school in Aldina Vistram in Mombasa. Uh, then yeah, I came to Kenyatta University. He's a bachelor's in finance. Myself, bachelor's in community development. Oh, wow. Yes, and we've been living together since then, actually. Uh, but then now our journey to pick up Mtani came uh, basically from the element of surviving in Nairobi. So what happened is uh, in 2018, we were both jobless. Okay. And um, we had um, a startup before, actually two. Mm -hmm. um, as uh, he mentioned, we are tech enthusiasts. Yeah. So we built a game called Wrecker Squad. Um, uh, <laughs> what is it called? Wrecker Squad. Wrecker Squad. Wrecker Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Find it one place to write. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make sure we <laughs> Okay, yeah. we'll make sure we download it. Yeah. <laughs> I like um, that. I like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but then um, uh, we can break down why the business failed. Because uh, ideally we were positioning the business for funding. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, and um, uh, we had talks with uh, Liquid Telcom at that time. They were mm -hmm. really investing in these um, uh, game meetups. Okay. Um, and, and we thought um, uh, we would get funding from them when we deal uh, the first version of the Rex Squad. Yeah. Uh, but then we failed to raise our funding from them. Okay. So that uh, led us go back to the drone Go back table. to the drone boat, yeah. Yes, and try to see what we can do. We also had an e-commerce startup on the site called uh, Stalls. Stalls. Hey, yes. guys are busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, surviving Nairobi. <laughs> surviving Nairobi, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So it was a multi-vendor platform built by Wix. Um, yeah. Uh, he, ah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And then later on yeah. by WordPress. WordPress. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually the one who coded it. Okay. Um, uh, so he's uh, self taught. Um, so we did that. Um, we, I remember we made a lot of trips to Isili because mm. uh, those were the bulk of sellers <laughs> at that time. Yeah. So trying to bring them on the platform proved a bit of a challenge, especially in terms of we wanted them to manage the storefront in terms of uploading photos. Oh, okay. And um, uh, we noticed that they were a bit analog at that time. Yeah. So, and also... Still are right now. Yeah, I can Still imagine. Are. Yeah, you just have to go to sleep. So, yeah. Yeah. And um, then uh, there was Jumia at that time dominating oh, yeah. the, the market on, the, <clears throat> on that front. So, we just, um, based on the numbers, because we were doing around two sales per month. Okay. So, we just decided to uh, shut it down. So, going back to the drawing table... Um, it started with me first, then Okia okay, joined in later, um, uh, the story. So um, I had two skills, photography and uh, riding a motorbike. Oh, nice. Yes. So, <laughs> and I needed to decide how I'm going to stay in Nairobi, which one I can easily convert. Yeah. So the motorbike seemed a bit um, easy because um, ideally I was a graduate. I think I could present myself better as a rider. So ideally, that's how I just uh, got into the business, DMing um, customers. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember the first customer was called Nuero. He's an influencer running Coco Chanel currently. So we tried to just DM, get feedback, or rather get um, an opportunity. Okay. And then you just go out and uh, try to deliver. Deliver. Yes. Okia joined me three, three months later, um, I think in uh, October, uh, then got into the business as well. And then at that time, um, there were a lot of trends that were happening because at that time we were offering only the door to door delivery. Okay. So yeah. basically, it's uh, the delivery that is primarily offered right now yeah. in our social commerce. So when you make a sale, you get it to, you get your rider, give the package, the rider delivers directly to you. Mm -hmm. That was the most common delivery service at that time. <laughs> but then when we were, um, we joined uh, together by November, we started noticing a trend in, uh, 
So there was a concept that was started by Nairobians called Rent a Shelf. Okay, so, yes. yes. Yeah. And um, uh, what happened is that sellers would uh, come, drop it at those lot of shops yeah. in uh, archives, the most central locations in CBD, yeah. and then uh, just um, drop the packages there for customers to come collect. But also there was a period whereby some sellers would go to a restaurant, wait for customers the whole day to actually come oh. pick packages at that time. Yeah, well. So we saw that as an opportunity to kind of provide, to provide a drop off point for the seller so that they don't need to stay there, stay there yeah. and also provide a bit um, uh, safer. Um, environment for them to store their packages because sometimes you'd live in the lot of shops they feel like they're built vulnerable yeah, yeah and also they would also give watchmen at some buildings yes yeah, of course yeah. so we now started our rental shelf service at that time we were ourselves shikilia store and um uh, notify yes notify logistics yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that was in 20, 2019 <laughs> when we started now the rental shelf service so we did that uh, for that particular year. But then uh, we noticed the economics of rental shelf is little. Because ideally packages, um, you, they pay a monthly fee. So maybe 1,500 to 2,000 shillings yeah. per month. But, but then, then it was they- 3K. Yes. Whoa, 3K. At that time, <laughs> yes. But now um, a lot of players came in and now you can get even at 1,000 shillings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, at that time, when you are looking at the economics is that 3,000 can only get you as much because they would drop, some seller would drop 50 packages per day. Oh. But then you're charging them monthly. monthly. Yeah, so um, scaling it even is difficult because yeah, you imagine. also, you have to scale in the element of space as yeah. well. Yeah. And lockers, mm -hmm. as safety. As, so we saw that um, it was a bit difficult for you to scale the rental shelf model. Okay. Um, so we started just juggling our minds because at that time delivery space now was getting crowded. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in Especially on the on the small end, on the people who could just ha get one bike, two bikes. Start mm -hmm. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Basic. So low entry point basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So ideally, a bike at that time cost eighty thousand. Yes. So it was so affordable yeah. for someone to just just set. get a bike and yeah. Yes. So ideally, we saw the deliveries aspects now getting um uh, a bit. Shrinking. Yes. Mm. So at that time, uh, we were lucky to make Bitange demo. Mm -hmm. the former PS, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was through a referral. So we met him at Java in Village Market. Tried to pitch now the company now was called Drop Desk mm -hmm. at that time. So Drop, <laughs> drop Desk. desk. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you can pick up time. Yeah. <laughs> so Drop Desk, um, um, at that time our plan was to, uh, to scale to the out of county packages. Yeah. So sending packages to Nyeri, sending packages mm -hmm. to Nakuru. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then he told us about the element of uh, the high capital cost. Because ideally, when you look at it, if I want to go to Nakuru, I have to come back. Yes. So already you have to put two vehicles yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. So look at that 47 counties. That yeah, is 90, so, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's 94. basically 94 buses. Yeah, well, then you have to put office spaces. You have to put employees. So it did not <laughs> make sense at that time. Um, the, and he happened to mention Copia in that discussion. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that time they, he gave us information they were making 5 million per day. Uh, so we were a bit intrigued yes. at that time. <laughs> so like, okay, what is what does Copia do? Uh, went to read about it, but also now um, since he kind of put uh, the drop desk idea aside, mm -hmm. we try to see now what can we How do. How you can pivot and yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, then we read about Copia. Then uh, we went to the US. We read about Amazon mostly, mm -hmm. and then when South we went Africa. to uh, South, South, South Africa, Africa, there was Pago. Oh. Uh, yes, but then uh, the ones that really worked was uh, in the UK. There was Royal Mail, and then we, oh, interesting. We, yes, yeah. and then we looked at uh, Alibaba with the Kainau Logistics uh, platform that they do have. So, when we looked at all that um, uh, data, we noticed that uh, in Kenya, as much as um, the internet uh, space was growing, e-commerce was growing, the element of selling online also was not growing as per the way people are. Yeah, yeah. Saying exactly, yeah. 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 Mm. To grow. Yeah. So we tried to to see what the problem could be, and mm. one we saw was the affordability aspect. Mm. As much as selling something online, getting it was a bit expensive. Expensive, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, so uh, based on the models we looked in Amazon Real Mail, we noticed the element of collection points. And then when we, oh, when we yeah. came here now, we saw why Copia was making that money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we saw Jumia in itself had an agency network, but it was limited to the people in the platform. Yes, yes. And, 
Yes, and then now we looked at now M-Pesa generally, how they've built a model of basically, it's literally a bank, but yes. utilizing um, the, <laughs> the net, existing uh, decentralized decent bank. <laughs> yes, so that's uh, where now the concept of uh, Pick Up Mutani, even the name started. Oh, cool. Yeah, so because uh, ideally it was someone setting collection points and you picking up on your way home. So Pick Up Mutani, um, the idea started in November. In uh, 2021, 2020, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2019, 2019, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, we were planning that because um, ideally we were financing ourselves. Yeah. We, yeah. We actually sent uh, the pitch raising Ooh. seventy thousand uh, to, to family. family and friends. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> seventy thousand. Yeah. That's supposed that's to be good. Yeah, yeah that's how it starts. Though. But it's yeah. Yeah. Start from your circle. No, yeah. we didn't get any. We got. Um, you they didn't give you. No, no. We, we only no. got from. A particular funding group called YGAP. And uh, oh, yes, and I think I saw an article of yours. Yeah. Yeah. And Share254, yeah, a particular brand who was already using us yeah. and uh, kind of believed in, in us at that time. So we got the loan from, from him. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so from one of our vendors, got the loan from that one is of our vendors. That is amazing. This, that's yeah. the most perfect way <laughs> yeah, of raising I know. Your, your, your customer is your investor, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Um, are you done? You can ask. You <laughs> no, can I was actually going to say that I love your story because I think we always talk about this, Chris. They've studied, they've yeah, done that's research. The, that's, that's, that's the thing I, I, I was thinking about. Yeah. You know, there's that proper market study, yeah. comparison, understanding customers, understanding why people are not buying. Yeah. Instead of saying, I'm coming to build Amazon, Amazon. For, for, for Kenya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, for the time, understanding where the friction points are and building exactly for the problem that exists in Kenya. So as But I guess also I think just to add on to what Robert was saying, if you look at the traditional or the conventional way of selling things, it's not Coca Cola who sells you the product. Yeah, exactly. It's not Brookside. Yeah, yeah. It's this existing it's a shop. It's a shop. Mm. So uh if FMCGs have proven that uh by have by decentralizing their supply chain, the cost can be down. Yeah. The cost can, can become uh, really affordable because they don't have to set up their own Coca-Cola shop and employ their own people. They just give you a fridge and put in uh, some soda. So it, that concept has still existed for, for a while. It's but just, you needed to yeah. study that to know to that. Know. <laughs> so yeah. kudos to you guys. Yeah. Like, honestly, that is, that is, I'd say it's genius. Yeah. Thank so you. good, good job. Thank good you. job. Thank you. Yeah. Chris? No, yeah, so, so I think my first question is now now exactly the mechanics of pick up Tani today. I'm selling jewelry from my Instagram page. So what's the process like? How do I sign up? How does it operate? Yeah, so generally right now, uh, probably I'll speak to what is right now and okay. then what uh, will move towards in the next one week or so. So if you are selling uh, from online let's let's yes, yes, let's, yes. let's say I'm you're just selling online yeah so selling online you could have a shop yeah. or you could be selling from from home yeah. or uh, whichever place is convenient for you yeah. so as robert has mentioned we've set up the pickup points okay. uh, across uh, neighborhoods and drop-off points okay. so the first instance would be uh if you live uh let's say in westland yeah there's a drop-off point uh at Sarit Center. So okay. it's a drop-off point would act as a drop-off point and a pick-up point for customers. So it, it would go both ways. Okay. You could send a package or you could drop a package. Okay. So the normal way is just you will fill in uh, uh, on, on a piece of paper or if you have your own uh, printed uh, stickers uh, okay. of where the package is going, uh, the customer details, and then now where Pickup Mutani comes in, it will give you both a physical drop-off point okay. and an online platform too fill in your details so that you can be able to track and pay for for the package so you would you would uh, fill in the details share share it with your customers in this case maybe you are the one who has referred uh pickup tiny to a customer it can mm -hmm. go both ways you can it's, the customer can request you to use pickup tiny or you could uh, be okay. the one uh uh introducing pickup tiny to to the customer so if you give Pick up tiny as, as as a delivery option. In this case, delivering to okay, yeah. to an agent, uh, you'd share it with the customer, and they'll tell you 
I want my order delivered in, for example, uh, South B, and you're in Westlands. So you'd, you'd go to the, the nearest drop-off point, which is in Westlands, uh, fill in the details on, on the system. You can do it at home. It's preferable if you do it at home. But when you get to the pickup pick up point, in this case, drop-off point, it's just you giving out the package. So you fill it on, on, on the online platform, create an account just a normal way, uh, drop it off. Uh, then, but then it works uh, within a schedule. So there's okay. the morning schedule. Uh, there is the afternoon schedule and then there is the evening schedule. So, but we, we, we do offer same day delivery if you've dropped them within that schedule. So you drop it off at the agent uh, once the agent picks it up because the agent also has an, an, an application on their phone uh, to receive the orders, to manage orders that are coming through uh, their, their space. When you drop it off, it's confirmed by the agent. The customer receives a notification okay. message to confirm that uh, you've dropped the order in yeah. itself. We'll receive the notification also to know that there's an order. And then within the schedule, the package is collected and then delivered, delivered. Uh, within the appropriate schedule. So when it gets to the, to the customer, uh, uh, that, the, that, sorry, when it gets to the endpoint, the customer receives a notification message to, yeah. to come and collect it. When they are going to collect, they'll present the, the message. It has a code that the, the agent will use to sign it out. Okay. So that's the, the popular one mm. that people use to send because it's the most affordable one. But you can still use the agent, agent's, uh, agent's premises to access other delivery services. So if you want to still send to the customer direct doorstep, you can still oh, okay. use still it. the agent to send to a customer direct. If you'd like to use uh, something we call errand services where is you are using the Westlands drop-off point as, as you are uh, dispatch point, but then again the package is going to Nakuru via 20K. So you can still do okay. you can still do that and you can still provide that service. So generally that is how right now it works. So, uh, moving forward is we are, we are now as Robert was saying uh, off camera before, we are digitizing the all of our services. So mm. Anything we provide, uh, any service we provide, we, we are digitizing it awesome. in terms of uh, offering new, from our, from our end, it's new, but it's not really new, but from our end, it's new. Uh, uh, pay on delivery technology. Uh, mm -hmm. On our end, I believe we've done it better than the others. I believe so. Uh, honestly. Which others? Also. <laughs> Tell us, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, Be uh, proud about it, yeah. I, I think uh, the, when, when I say better is ours can be accessed by multiple vendors. Okay. You, you, you don't have to be big or small to access our services. For example, if, let me mention Uber, Uber Eats. So mm. for you to sell on Uber Eats, I think you have, I don't know uh, so much, but I believe it's not so open to everybody. Yeah, I'm, I might be wrong. I, I stand corrected. Uh, for example, if you are using Jumia's maybe pay pay on deliver technology, probably you have to be selling on uh, yeah. the platform. I might be wrong. I stand corrected. Uh, Sandy also had it. Uh, but Sandy is gone. Yes, but Sandy probably is not. Uh, they're they're still trying to work up uh, work out their stuff. So, <laughs> so from our end, I I, I think the technologies we are, we are we are doing or we are creating is one that still uh meets what, who we are from the get-go it's trying to understand does this even make sense yes. to the customer mm. so right now where we are is is understanding that the technology that we've built uh, will it stand the test of time and exactly if yep. if it does what uh makes it to, to stand out the same way. Probably people say because time was a COVID thing. That's mm -hmm. what we, we, we got, that after COVID, it won't survive. Mm -hmm. uh, from, from their perspective, that's what they thought. Yeah. But from us, is we, per, we perceived it way, way before, way before the world. It just came out. Uh, yeah, it just right. came out during <laughs> yeah. that time. Yeah. So I guess when we say ours is better, is that realization that we've, we've built it over time. And yeah. we probably... 
uh, strongly believe that's how it should be. It's just yeah. uh, time will tell. It's also better because it's Kenyan and you guys are Kenyan and it's local. So <laughs> I already uh, give yeah, it to props I, I, I there. I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you get it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to this? No, not at all. Uh, just, uh, to, uh, uh, if it's okay uh, to talk about, because we talked about how logistics is very expensive uh, for, for businesses. If, if mm. it's okay to talk about the costs, if not, you could just say, like, what's the magnitude reduction would I get if I use pickup Mutani as opposed to, like, my ordinary into the guy yeah. or any other services? Um, so we've actually brought the cost uh, by 50 to 80%. Because um, yeah. okay. ideally, right now you can uh, deliver anywhere within Nairobi at 120 shillings. Um, so, is it in Kitengela, it's in Juja, it's in Gong, the farthest towns? You can still get the uh, delivery done at uh, 120. Probably maximum mm. to 10. Mm. It's from yeah. Where? Yeah. And, uh, to 10. Yes, mm. there is uh, the 210 charge, which is basically connecting two towns, yeah. like Kitengela and Juja, okay. basically. So, it's moving from the agent to the agent. But also when we look at the, our door-to-door -door delivery rates as well, yeah. we've also been able to do that reduction as right. well. Because so, so that's like a premium service that you offer for the door delivery versus agent delivery? Yeah, it, we kind of, it's more like a premium, yes. Uh, but then also the customer, we have the... The customer wants different things. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll, ch you'll charge them more for the door delivery and of charge course. them a little General, bit less General, General, yes. for yes. the okay. age. So you have a network of riders who just shuffle. Oh, so the first one, you have riders who shuffle between the agents. So like move this from uh, Westlands to, let's say, Kayole. Yes. Another one that does that. Okay. So in these scenarios, do you own those motorbikes? Are they... Least are they just contractors who you have doing this for you? It's, it's contractors, but uh, that we control. It's not like they do somebody else's uh, job. It's, ah, it's, it's dedicated. It's, yes, dedicated for us. Uh, yes. So, do you own the motorbikes, yes. or they're their own motorbikes? Motorbikes are ours. Are, okay, are, are, are from the company. For, for, yeah. Okay, so okay, and, and that that give, that gives you more control in terms control. of uh, <laughs> okay. how operations work. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. especially. I think all of you shopped online, whether it's food or something. <laughs> nobody ever wants a delay of anything. No, it's true. You get upset, man. You, you, get, like, you yeah. get really upset. Yeah. It, even if the delay is genuine, and most of the time they are genuine, I don't think any company delays out of their own volition. Yeah. So delays do happen, but... I don't think that's something the customer wants. Yeah, because yeah. this is uh, the play in logistics. For example, Cindy does not own any of the assets. Those are contractors who come in with their own. But I guess that that was something that worked uh, or seemed to work because of of the cost. Because you, mm. could, you could invest in the technology, you could invest in marketing. Uh, but then again, as uh, the thing Robert was saying, uh, mm. we were when we were told by Bitan and Demo not to buy your own infrastructure, yeah. vehicles yeah. and all that. I guess from a scale point of view, because Sendia at, 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 at a time had 2,000 vehicles maybe in the platform, on, yeah. on the platform. So you can imagine them buying 2,000 vehicles, motorbikes, mm. uh, vans. vans. Yeah. So it's, it's not a bad idea. It's, okay. it's, it's not a bad concept, but yeah. it has its drawbacks. That's, okay. that's, so do you think so. that owning the assets will limit you from scaling. Let's say you want to go to Nakuru. Assume uh, your play is to go countrywide. Mm. Um, so before, yes, um, yeah. uh, we, we really looked into it and we saw it does not make sense because yeah. for us to go to Mombasa, we have to replicate Pretty what we are doing right yeah. now. Yeah. Now, right now we are a bit uh, capital intensive because yeah. we have a lot of costs. Yeah. But then we, we hacked it in terms of, we are in discussions in actually franchising. The, okay, the I like business. that. Oh, nice. So, yeah. so yeah. You're, you're ticking all the boxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we identified three markets it, yeah. internally. Yeah. Um, so we identified Ghana, uh, Uganda, and Mombasa. Okay. So Mombasa and Ghana is where we've made significant progress. We are now waiting for the documents to be to be signed. Awesome. Okay. Uh, but ideally, um, we looked at uh, franchising as a way to minimize the cost. Yeah. So I think that's perfect. That's smart. Yeah. So yeah. what we've yeah. done is just look for someone with our DNA, yeah. our logistics DNA, yeah. um, I recruit them, 
um, I try to now pass on now the information. So we are going to give you all the information mm -hmm. that That's we good. know. Yeah. Then now we are attaching ourselves by giving you the technology to power that the delivery. Power delivery yeah. Yes. So ideally, yeah. that's smart. the angle of this. I, I think I think that's brilliant. Yeah, it's very yeah. smart. Yeah. yeah. So what about the agents? You don't own the agents. We don't own the agents. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So they control their own space. Yeah. And uh, everything else. But yes. but you have uh, to have some minimum uh, agreeable. Uh, what do you call this? Rules of engagement. Okay, okay. Yeah, in terms I, of how, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, where orders are kept, yeah. Uh, yeah. how customers are, are, are treated and all that. And and 99% of the time, it works. Well. It works. Yeah. yeah. So one thing that, so with with scale, uh, I think there's some of the problems like, what if a package gets lost? What if it breaks? Mm. What if something happens to it? Have you encountered that? Do you have <laughs> have you have plans to mitigate such things because it can really ruin the customer uh, experience? So that is actually a risk um, in any logistics space. Yes. Yeah. Ideally, whenever you're moving something, yeah. you can expect maybe something to get lost. Especially yeah. if you are you are moving volumes, yeah. something to get damaged maybe. Because yeah. ideally, sometimes we don't know the contents of the detail of the of the package. So maybe the way it's been handled, it can be handled a bit. Um, less the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing right now, we take full responsibility oh, wow. uh, as pickup and turning. So whenever package um, gets damaged in uh, transit, we actually take full responsibility. But then there are some guidelines we advise the vendor. So for fragile items, for example, you can bubble wrap that. Yes. So that you can at least also take responsibility mm -hmm. as the sender. Yeah. Who, yeah. Who, who takes up that cost? Of, uh, bubble, bubble wrap. It's the vendor. It's the vendor. It's the vendor. Yes. Because yeah. okay. ideally, also you also have mm -hmm. to have some responsibility. Yes. On exactly. your end. Okay. Uh, once also it's fragile. When you drop it, you can indicate it on the packet. It's fragile. The reason why you are telling us that you are making us aware to know um, the delicacy of that particular package. Okay. So we are able to now handle it with extra care. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. Um, when, but then when something bad happens in the process, yeah. we can, uh, we take uh, so, uh, full responsibility. Okay. In scenario where like you have to bubble wrap and all kinds of things, that definitely increases the costs. Oh, yeah. Do you pass that cost to the vendor? Is that cost you absorb? when there is like a, a additional extra things done to handle the packages by the agent? I think uh, the, the thing that Robert was saying, the first thing is responsibility usually falls on the, on the person sending the package because okay. when it comes to logistics and delivering a product, yeah. if it is expressively, if, if I don't expressly say that uh, you can bring this class and I'll deliver it. And yeah. uh, the first responsibility falls on you to mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. ensure sure. that we may protect yes. in, no. in, in a nice okay. way. Yeah. That's so then again, yeah. that's the first one. But yeah. Then again, the second one, as Robert was saying, is for us to tell you yeah. that, okay, your product is fragile. Uh, mm. make, sure yeah, you make, sure make sure you package it. Package it well. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Package it well. Yeah. But then also, uh, the, one, the, the other important thing is we also have things that we don't deliver. So you, yeah. you, you just have to accept <laughs> some things you can't deliver okay. uh, in a certain way. Okay. Uh, not that you don't want to deliver them, but in a certain way you can't deliver them. Uh, but you're still yeah. using the motorbike, so the, you're limited by yes. size, Yes, you're space also limited and by age. size and space. And as Robert was saying, when you're doing also volumes, yeah. it, it is imperative that somebody tells you what it is that they're giving you because you don't want to give me... Uh, a cat in a box. A cat in a box, <laughs> or, 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 or an eighty thousand gold chain, hey, yeah. and then you like get lost. Yeah. I've charged one hundred and twenty shillings. <laughs> I end up paying eighty thousand. So the risk doesn't match. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So I think it's it's it's, it's imperative on the seller to declare what they are yes. sending. Yeah. Do they declare the value? Yes, they do. Oh, nice. Yes, they do. Okay. But uh, we we do say or from time to time we, we you have to tell people what you do deliver because okay. people will always ask can you can i deliver this mm. and i guess that is where probably sometimes the if you're fully automated and there are no clear mm. communication guidelines or channels that's where customers now start getting disappointed because as much as it's e-commerce uh Robert introduced and said social commerce. Social commerce is people talking to each other. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't end at 
the package or the product being bought. Yeah. They will still want to communicate exactly, with yeah. the rider, with the delivery mm. company mm -hmm. until uh, it's, it's fully done. It's fully, fully done. So yeah. I guess having those open channels of communication also it does reduce the chances of something get lost or, or broken or damaged because I believe if something was to break, it will break. Yeah. <laughs> but if, <laughs> if, if you put in uh, those mechanisms, you'll investigate what happened. That yeah. the, the, so uh, so yeah. two last questions on this. Yeah. So you, you do same day deliveries. Yeah. Uh, what if you deliver to an agent and then the customer doesn't pick it up? Yeah, it, it's it's usually a three day period. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so there there are mechanisms in terms of uh, managing the, the the whole system. So it's three days. Uh, if you don't pick it up, it comes back. Okay. We inform uh, the vendor. Yeah. To, that the product mm -hmm. has been returned. Yeah. But then again, returns is it's an industry wide problem. Yes. <laughs> it returns. Costs. Yes. <laughs> that's one. That's one thing most people don't realize yeah. until you work in a logistics yeah. uh, company, is that sometimes you attempt to make a door to door delivery and then the parcel is not it's there. It's not there. Yeah. So the rider is stuck with this, and then the rider perhaps has to take it back to the agent. But the rider wants to be paid yeah. for the trips of returning. Yes. So you you have to incur the costs of the return unless you charge your vendor. Mm. And those are the, some of the small things that end up, uh, and especially if you scale. Yeah? Mm. And uh, I think one of the industries that has a very high returns is fashion. Yeah, yes. I can imagine, yeah. Yes. You, you, you buy <laughs> yes. a t-shirt like, you I don't know, like it. I don't, I don't it doesn't like it. look like how it, yeah, send, send, send it back. And then <laughs> now there's a big tussle on who should incur the cost yes. of, of, of uh, sending it back. So yeah, this is my questions. Well, actually within our network, we do free returns. Um, you do refer oh, returns. Free. Okay. So what happens is that um, uh, once you've not collected it in the agent, and yeah. for this example, three days have elapsed, we actually just uh, bring it back to the vendor, okay. communicate to them to actually take and, the package. Yeah. Even when we do, we uh, deliver door to door. Yeah. So if, um, uh, for example, we bring the shirt to you right now, yeah. and then you don't like it, our yeah. rider will go back to the office uh, without charging it. I suppose so. this is the benefit of controlling your own your rider. Yes. Yes. So you, yeah. do, you don't have like, oh, this is my, like an Uber mm, will yes. charge you Come yeah, back. To come, yeah, to come back. Yeah, yes. and then that makes this. Sense. Okay, yeah. so that means uh, so you own the assets. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the riders too are your employees, and you're there like on a monthly salary they or something. On cultural basis. Okay. But but they are uh, designated for us. Yeah, they don't work for any any yeah. other company. Yeah. You have to dedicate your time to be talking to Wow, yeah. how do you control that? We in this Nairobi, as we said, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. 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 The compensation has to probably match okay, gotcha. the, the time somebody puts into. So we we offer what we offer, and then mm. somebody looks at it and says, "Okay, fine, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll take just this, take this." Yes. Uh, but also, I guess uh, also in terms of managing the the riders was uh, the the experience we had as riders because mm. oh. we actually oh, did deliver for two. Of course, yeah, of so course. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we actually know uh, how, for example, to access Westlands, Lavington. So we kind of schedule even the routes as well. Yeah. Okay. So ideally we are able to plan the rider and, and they end up even taking less time because now we are using our uh, our knowledge to actually reroute uh, routes or packages. Dodging, so, dodging Kanjo. <laughs> we don't dodge Kanjo by the One thing that made us survive, well, actually we, we usually paid licenses even when we started. Mm. Oh, nice. So okay. it did. It was a bit crazy for you not to pay 3,000 um, the, the parking fee. Yeah. And then you, but you then get to access Nairobi CBD. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So to us, we invested, we actually tried to run a legal business from the get-go because okay. we wanted to have the freedom to operate without any any issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess like also you guys been like riding as well. You understand the pain points, like you understand how to tailor like a package that seems good to like your riders, right? Yeah. yeah like yeah. I know the pain points. I know what you guys go <laughs> through. Just, yes, you know, yes, yes. so that's amazing. Yeah. 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 All right, cool. Um, what's the most random question? What's the most weirdest thing you've been asked to deliver? <laughs> you can come back to that as you think. So so just, because, just, okay, yeah. you wouldn't know for sure You'd because yeah? uh, one of our policy is we don't open you don't, so it's customer like packages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For now mm. is that we don't open uh 
customer packages. Mm-hmm. So I can yes. run a weed business. Yeah, I can. Oh, on job. Don't think people like, yeah, it's fair. No, the, okay, running a weed, you could, but <laughs> I think, uh, there's one time one of our riders uh, experienced that because the police oh, no. usually uh, do know uh, yes. the people who are running those businesses. So yeah. when they were delivering, I think, uh, uh, it, it wasn't weed, but it was just something infused with with, with, with weed, I think, the mm. edibles. Mm, and okay. again, the police understood it wasn't our fault. Yeah, okay. Uh, because we had the information of who was sending and where it was going, even up to the door the itself. Yeah. Yeah. So it was them now to check it up because we gave them all the, the information. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Cool. Um, Do you look like you're into stuff? Yeah, okay. there's something just popped in my mind. <laughs> are you profitable? Yes, we yeah. are. And uh, <laughs> congrats. Uh, I, I think the most important thing is probably uh, when you are when we were starting, it's we could we could absorb the uh, the costs. Uh, so we had a runway for a while. So that that runway created room for more runway and more runway because you are the ones doing the deliveries. Okay, yeah. 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 So um, we didn't start by hiring. Mm, so the money. Amen. That amen. Okay. Had, Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you also learned how to, to, to ride yeah, a yeah, motorbike. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That that for, yeah. for two years. For two years. Yeah. Uh, Imagine. I, I, I'm, I'm beyond impressed. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So so I guess uh, it's the results that kept on pushing. Pushing. Uh, and it's your, it feels like it's your. I guess it feels like. It's, like, it's, it's yours. It's skin mm. in the game. It's skin in the game. I'm actually, yeah. 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 It's, that's amazing. So that's, that's how probably we've been able to re- remain afloat. Because I'm sure you're wondering, 120, where, where, where is, where the, is money? the money? <laughs> yeah. and, and that's the question everybody usually asks. How do you make your money? Yeah. So it's the scale. You have to, to do this business on a large scale basis. Okay. So, yeah. uh, and you have so, to be also a patient, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't suppose. imagine you. I yeah. 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 So I, I think the consolidation from my, like, if you go, you have three pickup schedules every day. Yes. Okay. Mm. So if I, let's say, go to the Westlands uh, agent and then there are like 50 packages and I can put them in mind to the and move them to, I don't know, Kangemi to that. I've replaced 15 duties going yes. Uh, yes. back and forth, and that the cost per package reduces, 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 yeah. reduces to like 10 shillings or yes. 20 shillings, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, generally. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and you are, you are actually uh, really correct. And that is probably where uh, we've had the edge of our most people. And what you were saying, patience, because patience, yeah. we did 27 orders the first the day. First day. And then we we imagined that we'll be doing 1000 10000 orders in a couple of months yeah. in reality that didn't happen <laughs> no, no, that's true. That's in reality true. that 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 didn't happen I because love of so many factors okay yeah. um just so chris brought around the money i'd love to talk about bootstrapping um i know you guys said you did you tried to do your first round within your friends and family but yeah. I, like honestly, I think I've tried that sometimes. They will never give you money. <laughs> you can try, but they will never give you money. I'd love to talk about, yeah, how's bootstrapping going? Um, I can imagine it's hard. You've had to make sacrifices. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear. No. I think also that maybe also narrows down to our co founder dynamics as well. Because mm. I believe also there's a time, it's not really, uh, I think, Okia wanted uh, to raise money. Yeah, yeah we're having those discussions today. I was actually up for it. Uh, but then again, we got um, a, sh- a bad deal. <laughs> uh, yeah, we actually got a bad deal um, from a company, a well-known company, actually. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, you can't disclose them? I don't know. <laughs> 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 you don't want to put Maybe them in trouble. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so uh, binds us. But it was a big okay. e-commerce yeah. platform. Oh, in, okay. uh, yeah, in, in Africa. In Africa, yes. Yeah. Uh, so with that, uh, we just um, I remember telling Okia then we built Pickup Mutani to where it is by the mere fact we've um, tried to understand the cons- customer. Mm. Then can we look at the customer as yeah. the financier? Because then when we go back to Shia to pay for them, yeah. why yeah. would Shia to pay exactly. for give us capital yeah, at yeah. that time? 
So then the customer is the one to actually fund us. Yes. So as if we focus now our efforts in building, building. for the customer, yeah. I believe we can be sustainable and yeah. actually profitable. And this was a loan, not exchange for equity? From, uh, from, from share to five. Uh, it was yes. a loan. It was a loan. It was a loan. Okay. So you, you retained yeah. the shareholding. Yeah. Actually, you maintained 50 yeah. 50. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a loan. So that's, that's, how, a, lesson. <laughs> that's a lesson. That's a lesson. Yeah. How, how it happened was that he was a customer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a family business, uh, him and the wife. So what what they they did was because we were giving them shelf space, so they paid us it's six months in advance. Oh, yeah. got so you, they, got you. So, so instead so of giving us a loan, and also said, supported the yes, business. Yes, yeah. So they told us we'll this, give you money for six months. So they paid us. This six is even, this is even more brilliant. Yeah. Exactly. This is the staff of MBA. <laughs> <laughs> And none of them have been to Harvard yet. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, all the people who say that, oh, without, without funding, you can never scale yeah. a business. You can say your best investor is your, is your customer. customer. Yeah. Oh, and this is a perfect case study uh, for that. This is, yeah, really brilliant. Um, are you open to, like, you know, um, Market Force right now have, like, told people, like, if you want to invest in our company, um, you can crowdfunding. Even, yeah, crowdfunding. Is, is that something you ever? If someone watches this video and just be like, "I'd like to support support pick up support," is that something you're open to? Is that something you're looking for? Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, I like this too. Yeah? You can see they work together. It's like <laughs> yeah. So to us, um, currently we've not uh, thought about uh, funding because uh, we were still developing the product mm. that we felt is needed in the market. Yeah. And um, uh, probably we got a bad deal before because we did not have the market fit type of uh, product to scale. Yeah. So to us, um, we thought we needed to optimize that first. Okay. And uh, you see this year already, we we did not have three schedules before, by the way. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we've, uh, we've been growing those schedules. Oh, we nice. started in first uh, 2020, one schedule. 2021, 2022, Perfect. two schedules. And then now three schedules. And uh, we did that because we are solving the element of turnaround time. Yeah. So that is the time taken for your package to actually arrive. Um, so to us, we feel there's still room to optimize because right now uh, we have an ambitious uh, plan to deliver within two hours. Oh, and, wow. that, and that is going to cost us around four to five schedules. So that, uh, uh, that comes in the next maybe one year again. And th that would increase the cost, cost too. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but then um, uh, for us to provide that faster type of deliveries affordably as well, yeah. um, uh, we need to, to do that. So to us, we feel we can still be able to meet um, that growth right now, mm -hmm. but we are still trying to optimize the business before now we get um, uh, uh, the element that now this model can be replicated easily in other markets. Because so, you've, even, you've understood yes. what, what is needed. Exactly. Yes. Most importantly, yes. it's yeah. like you've understood, yeah. Uh, rather than using somebody else's money to, yeah, yeah. to understand. To understand. <laughs> but, but, but do you know the sun, this, it's called OPM, other people's Post money. money. <laughs> <laughs> Why should I use my own money? Why? Because if it runs out, now that it becomes a problem. Yes. Because, yeah. because if and it runs out before you understand what actual yes, yes. And, and this is one of the yeah. things with the argument that you can't build a tech business without money. Uh, like money also has obligations. Yes. Right? Mm. It's, it's not free money thrown uh, to you and it can knock you off your path. Sometimes, like you say, you need that time to understand the market. Yeah grow the product, understand customer needs, pain points uh, f uh, for that. Because I believe, for example, in logistics, let's say my dollar. If you order, if you have a headache and order from my dollar, then they you, tell you, you, four don't, hours. you don't want you to deliver it. <laughs> 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 you yeah. are probably you, want you to it as soon as possible, yes. right? If yeah. I, there's something as if I'm buying a shot, maybe I'm okay with a few hours. Mm. Wait. Mm. If I'm buying something even like bulkier, I'm, I'm ready for end of uh, day. And I understand the cost implications for mm. Uh, mm. all of those. For you to understand that users have those different needs, you need time, so time, you need time, to study, yeah. and, and, and for that. But I feel like all the lessons you've learned are, have been spot on. Like all of them have been hitting so the great. right yeah. uh, spot. That's why I think uh, you know, I, I worked at Sandy. Mm. You know, we're, we're, we're a bit <laughs> envious of Vic and Daniel. Like, these are our competitors. They're stealing. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> big guys against the NBS. They're stealing our, 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 our customers because Sandy was also yeah. uh, uh, 
the social sellers was also a yes. target yeah. uh, market for uh, for Sandy for, Sandy. Uh, for that for at least for the do these and mm. the smaller packages that could be fitted into smaller uh, vehicles. So I was like, this guy seems to be doing something right, which <laughs> which I need to go steal and then, <laughs> and bring it to you. And so it's ticking all the yep. all all the all the boxes. So my next question is about so we've talked about scale from the getting franchises and that would be great would we be able to maintain branding and for example right now the customer as you said is responsible for the packaging of their items you know when you receive something from amazon it really has like an amazon box mm. amazon or whatever packaging types and you know it's well do, do that is that one of the things you think about packaging so when you do that, so ideally you'll have to increase costs. Yes. yes. And, uh, to us, we've uh, always maintained that uh, we wanted to maintain our costs. We, okay. we never want uh, uh, the, the costs of uh, pickup and turn to actually go further mm. than what we established. Yeah. Uh, so to us, we don't have that plan. But also when we look at the Kenyan market in itself, um, uh, the small seller wants to maintain their brand identity yep. as well. Okay. So we don't want to take away Okay. And that opportunity for them to actually um, show how their customer is precious to them and that can can be signaled by them adopting a different packaging for okay. them themselves. Mm. So to us, we don't want to interfere with that right. brand representation uh, so that they can have that direct relationship between yeah. the brand and the customer. I think I've never, smart. I've never had any, a better brilliant answer. Yeah. <laughs> Than, than that, because my point was going back to like all these small things you talk about, it, when you put them together, they end up significantly increasing yeah, the logistic the uh, cost. And the branding and packaging is picking from the American style and like, okay, let's throw let's this. Let's put everything on. Yeah. 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 You've, you've, you've been told by Michael Joseph, as we've had Kenyans have a peculiar. <laughs> so, <laughs> perhaps I don't care about the branding. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, just, just bring it to me. Yes. I, I yeah. have someone in Kino who makes my, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. I know him for 10 years. Your work is just to... Uh, Deliver. Yeah. So that means that without, if I have, the way Glove operates, if I have, uh, I don't know, I need you to pick up something for me in Zimmerman, I can still, as a consumer, come to pick up Tani and say, I have a pickup that I need picked up in Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. And that will still happen. And then I think the seller would have to drop it to the nearest point, yep. and then it be picked up and brought to my door. Yes, yes that's, that's this is that's brilliant. This simple. is a combining Glovo. Um, Sandy a little bit. Yeah, uh, combining that Glovo piece. and Sandy. Yeah, you can look at it as a poster Kenya. What poster? It, it's it's, it's just the that uh, poster was tied to letters. Yeah, but ideally, poster is basically what we are trying to mimic. Because poster was in every neighborhood. Yeah, and ideally, you yeah, could yeah. send and receive yeah. your letters. There, you could send and receive your bills. Uh, in that particular location. So ours is just trying to replicate that model. Okay. Awesome. So you're not a tech business, you're a tech enabled. enabled. Mm. And I think he said uh, that he's tech yeah. enabled. Yeah. Which it's is brilliant. very good to say. Yeah, like I love it. Because, <laughs> yeah. because I think it's uh, the basics have to be found Amen. in terms True. of <laughs> yeah. uh, what what happened. what is real. <laughs> <laughs> Because as you've said, yeah. that's how Kenyans are. I have someone in Kino. Can I just get that product? Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the rest is the rest, is the rest is up to you. <laughs> don't don't pass it on to me. Don't pass the cost on to me. Yeah. Don't delay my product. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't yeah. change the way don't I operate. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So if you've told me you're going to deliver in one hour and I can wait fine. If you've told me I can you can deliver in two hours and I want and I can wait fine. If you, if I wanted in thirty minutes. I think I have I have means to get it in thirty yeah. minutes. So it's probably just understanding that. And we was we we always say, let's say in the US, China, mm -hmm. and other places. For example, in the US, Amazon probably set how e-commerce should be. Yeah. In China, probably Alibaba and the mm -hmm. others set how e-commerce should be. In Africa, more so in Kenya, there was nobody. And we're trying to copy. Yes, yeah. and everybody was setting their own rules. Yeah. So I think the market has developed with without rules, but with unwritten rules. Because if Amazon said I'll deliver in two hours, it's, it was Amazon to deliver. It was not the direct vendor yeah, to deliver. Exactly, yeah, exactly. But right now, I don't need the captain to say, 
I'll deliver in two hours. Pick up says I'll deliver in two hours. It's fine. <coughs> if I accept that, I'll use pick up But if I want to deliver in 30, 30 minutes, I'll find just, another means. I'll just find another means. Mm. So that's how the market developed in in, in so our P- space. P- Pickham Tan is now going to set the rules for <laughs> logistics in Kenya. It's not setting the rules. It's adapting to, to the whatever. market the needs. Yeah, the market yeah. needs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, switching gears, I'd love to hear of challenges that you faced um, on this remarkable journey as we are, <laughs> as we are learning. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to speak more uh, in terms of employees. So... Ideally, getting people who are um, equally motivated, yeah. especially when you don't see the returns at that time. Mm. So at that time, when we were starting, I believe it's we were just selling a vision. Yeah. Uh, we did not, as much as we wanted to, we believe we are going to do 2,000 orders, 10,000 orders. Yeah. But then at that moment in time, people want a quick fix as yeah. well. Yeah. So it was us. It was hard for us to attract <coughs> good talent, yeah. especially because good talent was a bit expensive, mm-hmm. and also we can uh, mimic that even in terms of uh, the tech team, because uh, uh, since we are bootstrapping, we have to get <laughs> G- our G- tech developers who are <laughs> junior, 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 literally, yeah, because yeah, we've taken two years to actually build the technology we are launching um, in mm-hmm. eighteen. Okay. Uh, but I think um, if we were able to attract really like um, uh, good talent, mm. we could be able to do it even within one year. So I guess um, oh, wow. um, the element of just uh, navigating the, the employee space in terms of getting people motivated as us, but also giving them an attractive offer to get the good Attract. talent yeah. to mm-hmm. actually come on board. That is a major challenge, I would say, for us. No. Okay, I mean, off, I could offer them shares in the <laughs> company. No, I. <laughs> Why not? The first employees in most tech. But I mean, I, I completely agree. Like you know, and when you start trying to set up, like it's hard. As we, we talk about it, Chris, all the time, yeah. trying to sell a vision. It's it's like. Just wait and, and we'll get there. But it's like it's I understand that people have immediate needs, but I yeah, empathize with that and I can I can feel it yeah. for you. But yeah. um so you right now you have a like good tech talent. I think it's it's growing with uh the thing that gives you when you're we're in this situation is now you have to nurture. Yeah. You have to nurture mm-hmm. that. And sometimes through blood, sweat and tears, mm. but you have to nurture. You have to nurture. Yeah. So Right now, uh, we do believe in the team. It could be better. It okay. should should be better. Yeah, it can yeah. be better. Yeah. But then also we we are we adapted to the element of seeing that the developers have become experts in our code. That's uh, the current tech lead. What uh, what they tell us because they might be junior developers, yes, <laughs> but the moment they got exposed to our code, they've yeah. become kind of experts now to running our particular code. So that has kept uh, gave us the momentum to actually. Um, stick to the thing, but we feel there's still room okay. for improvement for as well. Yeah. Always, always. But that's really good to hear. And I guess, I, I mean, you'll be surprised how many engineers are willing to work on like a product that, you know, they're not being paid, but if they see your vision and talented ones, some people are craving that with the ones in Microsoft and Google who, yeah, but you never know. So <laughs> um, I think, um, yeah, if anyone watching this is an engineer and wants to help <laughs> an amazing Kenyan startup, please yeah. go ahead. Um, crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, any other challenges? Um, mm. Money in a problem? <laughs> no. Money will always be a problem. Amen. I would say. <laughs> Too, too much money is <laughs> also... also <laughs> money is always a problem. Money, yeah. money is always a problem. Yeah. I think... One of also the challenges is also probably to uh, we just circle back to it, creating a product that meets mm. fits the the market because there is a lot of noise in terms of you, oh, yeah. you hearing this person has raised this amount of money, so this much. person, <laughs> and you look you look at the concept like okay this f- fine, but then again what about mine? So then pressure pressure. Yeah. Mm. So again coming through to just remaining grounded and Amen. staying focused mm. it's hey, it's, it's also a challenge in this in in in, in that environment to yeah. to well as say this is what i'm going after it may take five years mm-hmm. uh, it may take one year mm. but this is what i'm going after so that's also a challenge in the space of the noise that you are hearing 
so and so is raising this, so and so has opened this, so and so has done this, so and so has done this. We don't live in a vacuum. Obviously, yeah. uh, th- that can get to you, but that is more obviously an internal challenge where if the founders or the proprietors rather don't remain focused, I think it's most of the time uh, not so talked about, but I guess remaining focused on, on, on that mm. actually over time brings about the desired results. How as, do you stay focused? How is, what's the, what's this, <laughs> like, you know, I know sometimes the, the, the it can seem, sauce. yeah, what is your secret <laughs> sauce in like, no, I'm staying focused on this. And I think it's, I think even like talking to some of the elements from like someone listening in, like you guys have ridden the, you've been riders, you've delivered. So maybe that, has is that something you've reflected? Because I think focus is hard. Mm. With as you said, with all the noise, but what what do you guys think? But, but you know, there's also the fear that yeah. if your competitor raises money, they're going to knock you out of the market. But I, you know, sometimes it's that I, from what I'm hearing is like they have such a good brand and understanding of customer. I believe so. So that like even though another startup came, yeah. and, and 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 unfortunately, Kenyan Kenyan consumers are beginning. Well, I think they'll get tired. Mm. Of all these new startups, everyone's like, "Oh, make an like." In, 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 I'll in stick with this. what I know as a Kenyan. Yeah, in, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I have a confession to make. <laughs> okay, <laughs> confess. Do. This is not a safe zone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of my friends, Brian. You remember Brian? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brian with his uh, edtech startup. He reached yeah. out to me. I don't know. Maybe it was last year. Uh, yeah, I think maybe a year's passes. So like, hey. So what are you doing? I was like, you know, my usual work stuff. I met these guys called uh, Pickup Mtani. They're looking for a co-founder. And you refused. Then he sent me a link. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking for like a tech co-founder. Oh, so, yeah. uh, At that they're, time we posted, yeah. Yeah, they're YouTube. looking for a tech co-founder. Uh, I know them. I, I can do uh, an intro. Then I was like, send me the link. So sent me the link. I didn't check. <laughs> I did not check. The link. Chris, so, always missing opportunities. Always. <laughs> See, I could not see focused. It. <laughs> you are not focused. It has this now. <laughs> oh, <and> this. Then, <laughs> I had a day job. Is, I, I Continue had, going to those employees who are telling you you have a day yeah, job. You can't so, focus on. <laughs> no, until. Uh, so I, did, I didn't check the link out, but I remember it was on my WhatsApp uh, because they told me I checked this uh, pick up and guys are trying to figure out deliveries uh, for that. I was like, ah, yeah, yeah. Then I, another person trying to make deliveries. <laughs> so, yeah, because you get fatigued. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until, so part of my job was also to look at competition, like mm. who's mm. You know, our customers using multiple deliveries until pick up and tiny came on my radar. I'm like, I've had this before. I, I can't remember where. <laughs> I just can't remember where. And then I don't know. I decided to search my phone or my email. Mm. Then boom, there it is. Six months ago, no, I was like, "You be sitting here." No, it's know, never too late. No, uh, no, hey, no, that's no, an so, offer. No, so, I started profiling <laughs> some of our, our customers. Then I realized like, every time pick up from Tani is just coming out. Oh, I'm like, okay. I, I like who 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 are these guys? I think I then I was headed home, and I think I stumbled upon one of the delivery mm. agents. Mm. So then I called. Where? Was it in Kayole? I think. Mm. If it's not Kayole, I think it was it's on Umoja. Okay. okay. Yeah. Then I was, it's like I called up one of my uh, people working for me. I'm like, go dig up <laughs> <laughs> what these guys do. Just lay me out the uh, like the processes uh, they follow. So I wanted to compare it with our own process then you know he went and did it and you know presented it back to me and then i started feeling some jealousy <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then i was like okay you know there, there are different markets i don't know uh, saying this way bigger we have trucks yeah. you had so many other things social sellers was a smaller yeah uh, <laughs> options and it just has its, its own problems so you we, went for a brand instead of no when you're well, making the decision <laughs> no it's, it's, Sandy has Sandy Freight. Had <laughs> Sandy, 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 Sandy Supply. Sandy Supply. Sandy, now? Sandy Fulfillment. Sandy and and yeah, so, I, I, in essence, in my perspective, they took one segment of what Cindy was doing and, and did it better. perfected it. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's my uh, perspective. Awesome. Yeah. But I don't think you've answered my question because mm. I can't to, to know focus. how do you maintain, maintain focus? focus? How do you stay focused? 
when people uh, uh, tell you let's go into there's okay yeah. there's uh probably may, maybe it's just mutually assumed is so what, what am i going to do else what else am i going to do mm. if, I, if, if i'm not doing this right because it's not like uh you see when robert was saying he had photography and uh the, the uh, do the, do the, yeah. He didn't say I'll do photography and do writing. L- let me just do one thing because I can do this. And when this brings results one, okay, let me do it again. Then when this brings another, let, let me just continue doing it. Let mm-hmm. me continue doing it because as I'm continuing to do it, I can see results. The problem comes when when you do something and then you don't see results. So yep. that's and or sometimes give up too easily. You give up because you don't see results, yeah. and you don't see results when you're not listening. Because um, if if if, deep. if if you're not listening, mm. then only a fool does the same thing every time. So yeah. yeah, and if you're not learning from whatever you are doing, because when you are doing stalls, as Robert was saying, you get two orders probably sometimes in a month, and maybe it's cakes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to deliver those cakes on your own <laughs> <I'm a tattoo. laughs> Oh, I remember somebody, uh, Gilbert, telling us he's never seen guys delivering <laughs> cakes. <laughs> <Like they're waiting. laughs> Surviving Nairobi. <laughs> so you see, it's listening to w- what uh, the voice were telling you. It's somebody, I want delivery. I, I can sell, please, I can sell. Just deliver this for me. Just, mm-hmm. yeah. And then the next one, you go deliver to somebody in this neighborhood. I probably assume uh, this neighborhood, some people are well off. You deliver to this neighborhood and then they would tell you, oh, delivery is expensive. They it would is. tell you that. Mm-hmm. No, you guys and, are telling me 120. I'm like, what? And, and <laughs> like, yeah. here, for example, someone would charge you between 350 to 500. 500. No, actually, yeah, 500. It's, it's because 500. I, I buy books from an online mm-hmm. uh, store and uh, they charge me about 500 books, 400 yeah. yes. 500 yeah. shillings. The other option is they have another branch in the CBD, yeah. so they can deliver it in the CBD, then I pick it. Mm. Uh, but I hate going but to But you the... can imagine, you, you're not just ordering once. So yeah. if, if, if the delivery cost is high, it's curtailing you from making those purchases. So actually, you're paying actually, 500, 500, Actually, 500. That's, you know, that's true. Yeah. What I do, I actually buy books. So I'll buy one this week, another, and I wait them to pile up <laughs> so they can charge me 500 bob for like 10 Everything. books yeah. instead of uh, paying 500 bob for each book. And so, sometimes I buy the books for 400 bob or 500 oh, bob. Oh, then you yeah. And then the delivery cost is 500 bob. And I was like... So you see now compound yeah. that with, with the rest of, for example, Nairobi, just uh, mm-hmm. speaking. And you'd, you'd find those numbers are in the hundreds of thousands of people mm. who are like, ah, let me not order today. Yeah, but I'll yeah. order just once it's because, yeah, so, yeah. because so you the, see now that problem brings uh, it, it reduces the size of the market. Okay. But when we when you we are doing something, let's say uh, introducing another schedule, and then we see results in three to four months. Ah, like okay, fine, we, we are doing the right thing. Okay, let's yeah, keep move forward. Let's say we introduce uh, food. We there's a time we we try to do food deliveries deliveries <laughs> and that concept it didn't work out the result there are results but they are not positive, positive. results oh, what so you have wrong? to listen again if you don't mind me asking yeah i think we just misread the, that industry because we established a central point of people dropping cakes and the, oh, food just... and the like yeah. so yeah. it was a food court and it was an expensive uh, mistake because we invested nine hundred thousand. and we shut it uh, down in two months <laughs> Oh, yeah. Fail fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we yeah. actually even uh, yeah. gave a fridge for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. They were calling us. They were calling us. Uh, we're like, fridge no. me, we are like we dismantle it. At a, at a umbrella. At a job. Yeah, share it with you. Come back. I come home. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. so great. So I think it's re- listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just how to remain focused is just to to listen, listen. Yeah. and to and your. Customers. Yes. Yeah, and, and I think we had that uh, advantage because we were very close to the customer. Amen. You know, mm. there, were, there were no barrier. Like um, we are the CEOs, but then it's us. We are talking directly, directly. to that. The, 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 the CEO has to be on the front line. Yeah. Yes. So Which yeah. Is the I think that's another great lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and you find the, <laughs> the, 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 the problem, for example, uh, with the startup ecosystem and. S- we are from that ecosystem, but we see the problems with that is. 
the customer's voice is never heard. No, yeah, it's, I think it's we so are, true. We are, we are importing a lot of concepts, yes. which mm-hmm. which is okay, which is really fine. But then again, to gen, to localize those concepts, because if Amen. you look at, for mm. example, uh, the most successful company in history of Kenya, Safari. Safari company, Pesa, yeah. Uh, one, uh, I personally did that study when we were in campus. We were told to do that study, and Safaricom, I think, it, uh, when Bob Collin was alive, mm. they decided they want to be uh, a Fortune 500 company. And they looked at ways that they, they are going to, to achieve that. So one, the internet was growing. Mm-hmm. So they, they, uh, they bought uh, an internet company. And then they looked at their employees. So yep. to build for the future, they could have people who are 50s, 60s working there. Mm. <laughs> so it had to be a million value of between 25 yeah. to 30, mm. not even above that. Mm. So that as the trends are going on, Safaricom knows mm. those trends. So if you, if you look at their products, if you look at M-Pesa, if you look at even just uh, their network itself, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's people hate to love Safaricom. And yeah, they hate, so true. They, they hate <laughs> Safaricom, but again, they love, love it. it so much. Yeah. You see. That is a complex, I must agree. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, but that, that has come from just listening to, yeah. to No, I always say they yeah. are the best at understanding. And even sometimes using data, like customers. Mm. Yeah. And all sect, like from, like all so, uh, different And, and, and the startup scene is, we are, we are not... Type. Yes, we're not doing yeah, that. We're not really it's, understanding. It's, it's focused a lot on technologies yeah. like all blockchain. Safaricom invested a lot in uh, listening to customers. Listen to customers. Mm. And uh, I worked at Safaricom, so uh, I'm familiar with all the processes that mm. they are, they're doing there. But yes. there was a lot of effort mm. that went into understanding the customers, complaints uh, that, that were there. And most of the companies that would receive the customers would filter to the product yeah. uh, teams to understand, like, you know, is it a network issue? Is this, mm. this a product issue? Is it a price issue? All those things you had to go back to the products team to figure out how to make the products better and even to launch new products like Fuliza, mm-hmm. uh, Mshuari, uh, and the rest. So see, that's listening. Listening, listening, yeah. listening. Yeah. So <laughs> it's you and him, the 50 50. There's no any other partner. Our time went. Like, you missed the boat. <laughs> This is beyond. <laughs> I never interviewed any startup where it was just the founders who had. I, I remember even when I called him, he's like, "No, we are co CEOs. He has to come." Which I was like, I respect. I reach out to many. I was like, I respect that, of course. This is, this is, for most startups, there's usually a silent partner yes, exactly. who is financing or something of that sort. Yeah. I think this validates the point that stick to the ground, yep. listen to your customer, build slowly. Yep. And don't take external funds. If you if you if you if you can resist the urge yeah. to, to, to raise much. money, then yeah. by all means you should uh, do it. Okay. Yeah. Um I think I have like just one final question. Like how you guys yeah, take care of yourself, like stress-wise, well-being, wellness. Because I can imagine it's a very, it's a tough, you're doing that, you're doing tough things. <laughs> like, what it's are a demanding. You? Yeah, it's very really demanding. Like, what do you guys do? I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have a life outside the company. You don't right? have a life outside yeah, the yeah, company. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we, we do. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> of late, we've been just um, uh, been speed junkies. <laughs> so we we just, uh, for example, just take the car, and maybe go for long drives, mm. uh, just to kind of cool off or rather to release the stress. But we've been committing ourselves to the company, and wow. we actually love it because I'm just 31, is 33, mm. so we we are still young to actually just focus on the company, mm. and to us, uh, we get um, I get satisfaction to actually see whatever it's, uh, it's actually becoming. So we're actually having fun at work. You're having fun and yeah. building. Yes, yes. I think the, is... the point is to uh, knowing that it's just, you're doing something that matters. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, even if uh, you, you want that work-life balance, 
you just have to find it uh, anyway. Uh, though we work from Monday to Saturday, so Sunday is usually a rest day. Mm -hmm. uh, so probably just family mm -hmm. uh, playing PS. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and you do deliveries on Sundays too? No, no, we don't do deliveries on Sunday uh, because uh, our our Monday Saturday, it's I think sexy. people need <laughs> that, <A> break. <laughs> that break. If they don't have that break, I don't think. Uh, they would last even an extra week. <laughs> That's, it's, it's usually a, a bit time 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 consuming. So Sunday is usually a rest day for for us, and mm. uh, even to just to rejuvenate, I okay. guess. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, Chris, do you have any other? No, it's been brilliant. Okay, I do want. How can how? I think it's just been exactly as Chris said. Brilliant listening to you guys. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I think anyone listening has learned a lot. Is that what, how can we as like Kenyans, like, you know, I really want to see a Kenyan startup thriving and growing and like just being amazing. <laughs> how can we support you? <laughs> just, yeah. just, yeah. What are, what are your needs at the moment? Mm, I'll go first and finish. I think it's understanding that, uh, Good things take time to build, okay. and I, I think sometimes that lacks within. Uh, it's not lacks lacking, but it's uh, the self belief as Kenyans. Sometimes we don't have it. Mm. It's in the sense that we know something can be great, something can be big. Uh, it's just that we've neither of us in our lifetimes or our parents' lifetimes have seen it's those. Yeah. So when you speak about, oh, I want to build. Uh, this uh, that does this, it, it, it seems as if it is uh, in, impossible. So whether it, it is uh, from customers sometimes or it is from uh, your, your nucleus in terms of family, friends, even employees themselves, it's what Robert was saying, quick fix. Because, so for example, uh, today we had a call from one of our customers uh, it's not really a complaint, but not understanding why uh, we were doing some things uh, with, with the tech. So Robert had to explain uh, this is how uh, uh, it should be. And the customer was even willing to say, I'll, I'll, I will look for a different service. But then again, if you look at the big businesses, because, for example, uh, this person is selling on social media, selling on Facebook, it's selling on on Instagram. So for Facebook to ever get to that point or for Instagram to ever get to that point where she can actually, she can actually sell and make a living out of yeah, Facebook, Facebook yeah. that society had to had believed in that product. Yeah. And that society is what built that product for somebody in Kenya to come and use that yep. product that was built by a different society mm. to be used here for you to make, to earn a living. So yeah. it's just that that Kenyans have to and Africans as a whole, I think we have to believe in ideas. Yeah. We have to believe in the concepts. So yeah. if, if that happens, I think then I think people can move forward mm. uh, to whether whether it's 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 a it's a small business or, or a big business or whatever it is, I think it can create more value that way. If we have just some little bit of patience and know that things can become better. Yeah. Okay. You said it all. Um, <laughs> yeah, mine is only to add uh, the element of kindness uh, mm. while us, uh, they're being patient. Because uh, um, we've noticed the element of um, people just um, uh, saying hurtful things when you are building. Yeah. And mm -hmm. especially this, um, these things are plastered, for example, in the Google reviews. And uh, that um, goes, uh, it kind of uh, creates disbelief especially someone coming to pick up Mutani and seeing maybe bad reviews. Mm -hmm. But ideally, um, uh, when he mentioned the element that sometimes can call, can be a conflict when you just go to directly to an agent, but you don't know our policies, mm -hmm. um, and that can create um, uh, a situation whereby we can't be in conflict. But then um, uh, with the, whenever you are giving feedback, we believe that it can kind of come in a kind way as compared to someone just um, it's like that. They want to ruin you. Yeah, the yeah, feedback no. is like um, yeah. they're dismissing Kenyans, you. Kenyans, yes. Kenyans, Kenyans. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think that is 
I think I, I completely agree with you, but yeah, it feels like I always call it the tall poppy syndrome. They feel like they just want to cut you down, cut you down, yes. <laughs> and make you feel like yeah. And then, but I think you you are doing. I think keep focused is all yeah. I can tell you when you're doing that. Your your yeah. your business and your idea. It's going to go places as long as you just keep focused. Another way of supporting them. Yeah. Use their service. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Use Pick Up Mtani, definitely. Yes. But again, thank you. It's been remarkable. So, yeah, there you have it. I really enjoyed um, talking to you guys. Thanks so much for your insights. Uh, make sure, as Aura said, as they've asked, I'm asking, check out Pick Up Mtani. Let's root for these guys. Let's push for their success. Um, we want to see success, um, yeah, in Kenya and in the startup scene. So thanks. Until next time, Kwaheri. Peace out. That was really good. Thanks. Really, yeah. It felt like an MBA class. Nine to five has good vibe, but nine to five with Gary has.